You're listening to Minor Talk On Demand exclusively on 600 ESPN El Paso. Stay up to date with Minor Talk by downloading the free 600 ESPN El Paso mobile app. All right, welcome in. We are live. Minor Talk is here presented by the Austria Dieta Agency. Oregon rolls over UTEP 71-49, to not even a close game when it was all said and done. It was a 19-point deficit for the Miners in the second half. Uh, they were outscored 43-24 in the second half alone. And that's really where uh, UTEP's woes came. In the first half, they hung in there. They played some pretty good basketball. And I actually really like the way that the Miners fought in that game. Uh, 28-25 was the first half score in favor of the Oregon Ducks. And then the Miners just really couldn't do anything in the second half against a far more athletic team in Oregon. Now, if you want to talk to me about talent discrepancy, I don't think it's a colossal uh, gap between UTEP and Oregon. Uh, the Ducks right now are 6-2 and two on the season after the victory today. And I'm not going to go crazy over how good how good that team is or, you know, uh, gas that team up too much. Yeah, sure, maybe they're an NCAA tournament team when it's all said and done, knowing that they've got a lot of those McDonald's All-Americans like Joe Golding was talking about. But, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't that impressed with the Oregon Ducks uh, throughout this game. They were just far better than the Miners. And UTEP in this one... 18 turnovers. I know they turned uh, Oregon over 18 times as well. But like you heard in the broadcast, it was the Ducks who capitalized off those turnovers. And the Miners could not capitalize on anything offensively throughout the night. They were out of sync. They can't really figure out their offensive uh, flow throughout the game. They don't feel comfortable when they're on offense. And um, still, we are scratching our head looking at who is going to be the guy to make the big shot. Who is going to be the guy who helps helps will this team to victory who's going to be the guy who helps bring this team back when they're down in games still don't know the answer to that question i'll turn it over to the brain trust uh i don't leave today disappointing or disappointed i guess guys i think um i knew this was going to happen i thought the miners would get blown out my attention was turned to abilene christian which will be a week from tomorrow uh that's the game i've definitely got circled for the miners but we've got alberto Rat- the Sal Montes, Zegalindo back at our uh, River Oaks Properties Schoolyard Sports Studios. Guys, uh, we'll ping around the room. You give me your reactions first. Let's start with Sal, then we'll go to Alberto, then Zay. Go ahead, Sal. Yeah, I think um, I think the disappointing part was just seeing how quickly this, this game got away from them because of their inefficiencies on offense and, and also not being able to take care of the ball. Yeah, they, they forced turnovers. They finished with the same amount, but at the end of the day, it's it's what you do with those turnovers. And w- when you can't move the ball effectively, they, they had trouble passing. I think that's concerning as well. But when you're not able to move the ball around, and, and Golding said this in his postgame interview as well, not able to get rhythm shots, um, that that's really a, a tough thing to overcome because where's your offense going to come from, especially when they're not – you know, scoring on the other end when they get those turnovers. So that's uh, that's what I take away from it is that there was no real improvement um, pretty much at all in the game. So I, I expected them to lose, don't get me wrong, but um, I didn't expect them to look as bad as they did. Uh, let's go over to you, Alberto. What do you think of this game? Well, I think that although the defense looked great for the Miners, uh, the offensive woes left them struggling the whole second half. I think that inability to get uh, offensive cohesiveness going, that really hurt them, and it just you don't put up any points, you're not going to win any ballgames. Yeah, good point. Uh, Zay, you close it out. Give us your takes on this one. Yeah, you know, I obviously didn't think UTEP was going to come in and, and beat Oregon and Eugene, but, you know, Oregon, they had three big-time injuries. you think UTEP would have this one a little bit closer, as they did. You know, they were only down six before Oregon goes on an 11-0 run in the second half. So I think that's the disappointing part uh, for me is the way this team just fell apart down the stretch. Yeah, you know, the big one that I'm circling is the 11-0 run by Oregon. That really dis- it helped distance the Ducks in this game. But look, guys, it was Oregon 45, UTEP 39 with 11 minutes to go in the game. They weren't completely out of it at that point. Then you look deeper into the game. Uh, you look at the the eight-minute mark. They're down 56-39. That's when Oregon started to really distance themselves. But really, at the 10-minute mark of the second half, the Miners were still in this game, still in it against the Pac-12. 
12 team. But like you mentioned, say they had injuries. Oregon did not, in my opinion, look like the best team out there uh, that, you know, you, uh, UTEP has seen all season long. I just feel like you look back on these four straight losses that the Miners had, and I'm not really counting. I mean, we, we've talked about this a lot on Miner Talk. I don't really count that Western New Mexico game as a big win for the Miners in their column. In fact, I would still extend that losing streak for the Miners up to this point. It's four games in a row. I look at the Bradley loss. I looked at the Loyola Marymount loss. I look at the Texas A&M Corpus Christi loss and then tonight's loss against Oregon. And those are four straight losses against Division One teams right there, Sal. And those are the ones that I'm counting right yeah. here because those are the ones that at the end of the season, we're going to go back and say, hey, how do they do during this stretch? Well, it's four in a row that they've lost. Yeah, and and their record as well, you know, just in general, it's it's really a three and four record, in my opinion, instead of the um, instead of what it is now. So it's it's tough, Adrian, because true road games, they're not looking good. And then at home against the Corpus Christi, you know, obviously they lost. We, we know that, but. You could also see those inefficiencies in, in that game as well. And with that four-game losing streak, at what point you know, can you really look at it and say, hey, there's been improvement in XYZ area or another one? It's, it's hard to take that from it as well. So I don't know, man. Maybe just, just hit a reset button and, and try to attack it a different way. I know uh, Golding mentioned it's going to go with a different starting lineup going into uh, Abilene Christian next Sunday. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see what's changed, I guess, by then. Yeah, I want to talk about that, too, here when we get uh, into minor talk later on, especially when we turn the page and look over to the Abilene Christian game. I found those comments real interesting by Coach Joe Golding after the game. He he just ha- seems at a loss for words from the offensive inefficiencies. And, guys, this is what I really think. I think that offensively, when the minors are not having success, they start to let it affect how they play defensively. And you don't want to see that from a UTEP team because UTEP's defense will keep them in games. Kind of like what Joe Golding was talking about. If they had just played some defense down the stretch, maybe it's a closer game. Maybe they had a chance to actually win the game when it's all said and done. But the defense kind of fell apart in the second half, and it felt like they lacked motivation defensively in the second half. And it's because of all the uh, turnovers that they're causing offensively and how shots are just not falling. When that happens, when you're not having success offensively, it definitely translates to the defensive side with this team. They just... They lack motivation, and it's hard when you go that hard defensively and then you're not having the success offensively. It's hard to trust what you're supposed to do on defense and how hard you're supposed to go. Uh, I'm going to give credit to some guy, Chris. He said the Miners in the last four losses, they've averaged 54.5 points per game, which is really low. 36% shooting from the field. That's pretty low. 19% from beyond the arc. Yeah, 13 for 68. Oh, man, that's just not acceptable right there. And averaging almost 18 turnovers a game during these four losses. It's just offensive inefficiencies, offensive struggles that the Miners are going through over these past four games games. Our telephone number to get things started here on the show, 915-505-6009. We are presented by the Oscar Addy at the Agency. We'll get to our awards later on in the show. Uh, the Timothy Cantrell player of the game, and then the hot hand of the game brought to you by Wind Supply El Paso. But if you want to talk about it with us, give us a call early. We're, we're probably not going to go on too long tonight. We already uh, said it's the big game against Abilene Christian next Sunday that we've got circled. And then after that, it's the Don Haskins Sun Bowl Invitational. Uh, Zay, I'm going to go back to you. If you had to pinpoint one of the issues with the UTEP offense, what are what's one of the issues that's glaring at you right now that you're worried about for this UTEP basketball team? Yeah, to start off the year, I think UTEP played really good in transition. And I think these past couple of games, it's kind of fell off, right? They're not getting those big-time plays. We saw a missed alley-oop today. It was kind of disappointing to see that. You know, an easy bucky go turn into a turnover so I think that they haven't been playing as well in transition as you know as they started I think that was something that you know we were looking at Utah we were like wow that's a big improvement from last year they're running in transition they're a fun team to watch and you know on this losing streak four straight losses against division one teams we have not seen that uh, Zay is there a player on this team who you think could help resurrect their offense a little bit 
Um, you know, I, I, I would say, obviously, Zid Powell, he's been kind of, you know, off and on these past couple of games. And Calvin Solomon, he has just been, you know, kind of absent offensively, which is disappointing to see because coming into the season, you were hoping a guy like him would take that step offensively, and he just hasn't. No, he hasn't. Actually, he's he's taken a bit of a step back on both sides. And there, and remember, I've said this since the start with Calvin Solomon. I temper my uh, criticism to Calvin Solomon, knowing that they're asking a lot for him uh, from him defensively. You watch him in stretches. He's often guarding the opposing team's big, and that's asking a lot from a six-seven man. You know, I mean, I just think that Calvin Solomon is good. Is he the best defender in Conference USA? I I don't know. I think the jury's still out on that, and I think uh, that's what he's trying to gun for uh, playing this season with the Miners, but I just don't know if it's going to get to that level and if he's going to have that kind of upside. Let's go to uh, Twitter right now. We've got a bunch of posts that came in throughout the show. Uh, hey, shout out to Joe Rod, who sent us that he was he had the under out watching it in Mexico. Shout out to Ignacio, who's out in Oregon watching the uh, UTEP Oregon game. Um, this is coming in from Snappy Trades. It's like watching a Dana Dimmel offense, but on, <laughs> but in basketball. This is coming from E. Garcia. Nothing new. This team is horrible on offense. I like Coach Golding, but he's not going to do anything at UTEP. Uh, Herman Flores, when does the UTEP football 2024 schedule get released? Uh, this is coming in from Tristan Pence. Another disappointing showing by the Miners and a fourth straight loss against a Division One opponent. UTEP came into the season losing a point guard and a quality big man and failed to rec uh, recruit either position in the offseason. These positions are a glaring weakness on the team. Tristan Pence checks in. This is coming in from Tris uh, Tristan Pence here on the show. Uh, he says, UTEP is flat out a low IQ basketball team. They play hard but foul way too much and look clueless in their half-court offense. These problems have to be addressed over the next Next three weeks, but this coaching staff, I don't see improvement anytime soon. Hashtag minor talk. 915-505-6009. Let's go to Ronnie first here on the show. 915-505-6009. Ronnie, good evening, man. What's going on? Good evening, guys. What's going on, Ronnie? Um, you know, I, I hate to say it, but this, 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 what you're seeing now. This is, this is all because of Golden and the staff. Like I said, Golden is a great defensive-minded coach, and but he needs a guy who can actually recruit, and he needs a guy who can instill an offensive game plan, almost like an offensive coordinator, if you will, because that's just not something that he does. You know, what I mean, that's that's not part of his forte when he's building out a team and building out a game plan to win game to game. Like that's just not how he's viewing the game. There's nothing wrong with that if you if you have a counterpart. You know who you trust to kind of run with that, and he certainly, certainly needs that. So while he's talking about shaking up the lineup, uh, eleven games into the season, that's all well and good. But there's two things that he needs to do next year. A, and this is this is the most important. You must stop scheduling non-division one opponents for Christ's sake. You're you're you're, you're UTEP. In a mid-major league, you don't need to play any tune-up games. You need to play live opponents. And if that means you got to fire up the jet and go play somebody, so be it. But you don't need to play these games anymore going into year four. You just do not. We're not in the COVID year where guys are on a 50-mile travel restriction radius. you got to play real teams so you can, every rep, you can prepare guys for live game quality basketball. And secondly, uh, I appreciate him shaking up the lineup, but you probably need to go ahead and shake up that staff too. You, you really do it. At some point, we got to have guys who can have a role and be a star in that role. Either you're my lead recruiter and you're getting me the big dogs, or you're an offensive juggernaut and you're helping me create an offense with the team I got so we can at least get over you know, 70 points a night while I'm steady pumping defense and, 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 and life into these guys on that end of the floor. If those two things don't happen – then real quickly as minor fans, we're going to be sitting there scratching our heads saying, wait a minute, who really won when Rodney Terry left and who really lost? Because those are going to be the downfall of Terry, as I said last week when I called in, or I'm sorry, Golden when I called in too. Like those two things have to happen and they're, they're beyond him himself to make happen. He has to, you know, have that tough conversation with 
whoever those guys on staff are and those, that are those responsibilities and say, hey, I'm just not getting enough out of you. And it doesn't mean you're not going to be a good coach somewhere else, but it's just, you know, just not working here. You know, his loyalty now must turn in year four to we can't have potential. It's got to turn to production. And when it doesn't, people lose jobs. I mean, this is a big boy business. Yeah, and, and you know, it's a, it's a really interesting point, Ronnie, and I appreciate the phone call, man. Thanks for weighing in. Uh, you know, I think something that a lot of people have held coaching staffs across the country very accountable to is having the right coaching staff, having the right people in place, having the right system and, and you know, coaches who can either A, recruit, or B, are going to be great X's and O coaches. And I thought that Rodney Terry had some interesting guys. I mean, Lamont Smith was a great player. Uh, coach on his bench, you know, that you reflect back to most recently, I think that is probably the last well-rounded assistant coach that you could say could both recruit and coach X's and O's on the UTEP bench. But yeah, I mean, I, I can agree to an extent that this coaching staff, the guys that he has around him, he's been as loyal. Joe Golding has been as loyal to them as possible. And if there are some inefficiencies that just aren't working out, there has to be a reality check within the coaching staff, within the players that they got. They have to have that kind of uh, co- you know reality check check at some point hey let's keep things moving thank you ronnie for your phone call let's go out to cj minor fan 915-505-6009 is our telephone number 600 espn el paso on social cj good evening man what's going on oh sorry sorry guys it's actually jj minor fan oh, oh JJ, what's going on? on it's been a while it's been a while um uh actually i'm starting to believe that Golding is in over his head. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, there's no adjustments. There is no role player. And he, the previous call was correct. There's no star player that he's recruited that can take over the game. And this was embarrassing. 40 points in two halves? That's ridiculous. Come on. Even, I mean, that's ridiculous. I just want to see that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I hear you, JJ. You know, the offensive inefficiencies cannot be overstated by this team right now. I mean, only scoring forty nine and two quarter, uh, two halves. I hear your your uh, what your frustrations are coming uh, here on the show. In fact, Zip Powell only with four points. Calvin Solomon had zero tonight. Kevin Kalu had seven. They were led by both Tay Hardy with sixteen and Otis Frazier with twelve. Uh, Corey Camper had five on one of six, and then David Terrell, a pair of, of buckets with just uh, one of three scoring. So they're just not getting a lot of offense from anyone all across the board. Tay Hardy is really where they're getting their offense from, but he was 5 of 11 tonight and had a trio of three-pointers, but those all came in the first half. In the second half, couldn't get much going. So let's see what this UTEP team can do to try to get their offense going at some level. I'm not sure where it's going to come from from, but yeah, they're going to really have to figure it out here moving forward. Hey, JJ, I appreciate the phone call, man. Thanks for weighing in. Let's keep things moving. We got Hunter next on the phone lines, 915-505-6009. Hunter, good evening, man. What's going on? What's going on, guys? You guys keeping warm in the studio? Oh, yeah. You know it, man. What's going on? <laughs> Getting ugly outside, man. It's not good. Oh, you know it, man. Uh, you know it. What's happening, Hunter? Well, I think UTEP needs to reevaluate going to uh, tournaments on the West Coast, man. Seems to derail team. I don't know what it is. Happened to Rodney man, Perry. Hawaii. So then it was yeah. uh, then it was the trip to California this past year that just they can't shake it off. Four games now they've lost in a row against Division One opponents. Hunter, how do they fix it? I think they need to start going to East Coast tournaments, man. Just just change it up. Change it up, man. <laughs> hey, at least Frank's is from Philly, so yeah, maybe you're right. Well, and, and you know, the, the, I get it. They were playing weak opponents, right, to start the season. But you cannot tell me that this is the same team you saw the first two or three games. It's not. I don't care who they're playing. The team's not the same. And I, I don't know what, what happened. Uh, to me, just the outside observer, I don't, I don't have any other information to go off of. I, I, it, it looks like something happened with Zid Powell, and 
the 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 communication between him and other guys on the court is not good. The body language is not good, and it seems like anytime there's an issue, the only coach that's able to talk to him is Spriggs, who, who I'm assuming is the one that recruited him. Am I correct in that? Yeah, you're 100% correct. In fact, Spriggs was his junior college coach uh, when he first started playing college basketball. So you're exactly right on that. Yeah, so no, nobody else, you know, is able to reach him somehow. So it, it's like if there's some sort of agreement that, okay, he only has to go to Spriggs and Spriggs is the Powell whisperer. Because the, the Powell you're seeing now is not games one, two, and three. So something happened there, and whatever that is, oh, well, as long as they can fix it. But, uh, you know, I think Ronnie mentioned it earlier. Uh, you know, I thought Golding was an X's and O's guy, but I, I think he's just the, hey, go out there and play as hard as you can, which effort is always good, but effort without purpose and without without direction is, is just waste. And they seem to just try and run the same types of, I, I wouldn't even call them plays, maybe run the, the same types of motions. Uh, every game, regardless of their opponent, regardless of who they, who the, who UTEP has on the floor, it's just the same thing over and over again, and we're getting the same result. So maybe he's not the X's and O's guys we thought uh, we thought he was. You know, it's just what, what what is the mark of a good coach? How do you tell that a team is well coached? Yeah, They're I don't know, man. In, in 2023, well, I don't know anymore, though. But good, well coached teams are disciplined, they, they limit turnovers, they take good shot, shots, and they don't give up a lot of layups. And so far, oh, and they make their free throws. There, there's another good coach team. And they, they do none of that well. You, he can't control if they make threes or not, but uh, you know, that's kind of on the players getting in the gym, putting the ball up and, and making themselves into good shooters. Agreed. That part he can't, can't control, but everything else, that's coaching. And that's what you. I, I, I've been to a practice or two last year. I haven't gone this year, but I have a feeling it's like what we see in the games: a lot of energy, a lot of movement, a lot of effort, but not a whole lot of direction. Uh, and I think you know he wants to reevaluate now as far as who's getting playing time. I think he needs to reevaluate himself and his staff. And hey, what are we doing? And how do we get this team back? Because the team doesn't seem motivated. They're they're not playing as hard as they were. Uh, same thing on the defensive end. They're giving up loose balls. They're they're giving up rebounds. Uh, so they're just not a. They're they're just not putting in this, the effort we're used to seeing from them. And there's frustration. Nobody's happy. Golden's not happy. So they just need to reevaluate what they're doing. And they have the talent to compete in this conference. Uh, it's just if they can put it together and make it happen. Hey, Hunter, man, uh, I appreciate the phone call. Thanks for weighing in. 915-505-6009. Next up is Mike from Austin. But before we get to Mike, let's do this. Let's take a break here on Minor Talk. We got more phone lines available. We're going to react to Hunter's phone call. We'll also get back to some points that Ronnie made as well. And we'll keep Minor Talk going as we continue. We're presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency. Let's take a break right now as you're listening to Minor Talk, presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency. More coming up here on 600 ESPN El Paso. All right, we are continuing with Minor Talk, presented by the Oscar ID at the agency. We got Sal Monte, Zay Galindo, Alberto Reta. I'm Adrian Bratis. Uh, we will continue on the phone lines next, 915-505-6009. We've got Mike, who is joining us next on the phone lines. Mike, good evening, man. What's going on? How you guys doing? I can't believe we lost by 22 points and couldn't even get to 50 tonight. This is a butt waxing. It's not acceptable. I didn't expect to get throttled like this, and uh, I'm infuriated. Uh, I got to ask you a question: Is Derek Hamilton still on this team? You know what? That's a great question. He was. He played a little bit uh, against the Western New Mexico squad, and I thought, well, maybe this is more to come for Derek Hamilton. Maybe he'll start to earn more minutes. But again, another DNP for Derek Hamilton did not play tonight. What were they holding him out for? I mean, we're down by 18, and there's three minutes left to go. They can't put him in there. And when he does show up, they let him play. He usually gets three points and then a foul, and then they sit him right down. Let him play till he gets five fouls. Who cares? What are we going to do, get worse? 
Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, actually, I I agree with you, Mike. I would say that Derek Hamilton can at least give you some offense, and isn't that something that UTEP's lacking? So if Derek Hamilton can't even get minutes, what does that say about what he's doing or not doing right now? He might be in the doghouse. He might not be doing stuff that they want him to do in practice, and uh, I'm with you. I think they just need something offensively at least uh, down low. Yeah, this, it seems like Derek Hamilton could at least help him out. I would think so. Now, i got to ask you a question. Why is Oregon not a big game, but Abilene Christian is a big game? I would think that the chance to go play a Pac-12 team is a much bigger game than playing Abilene Christian. Yeah, it's a great question. I think I'm putting it in more of this perspective. I think that UTEP, based on what we saw against Texas A&M Corpus Christi, I thought they were going to lose this game. Now, am I disappointed that they lost the way that they did? Definitely. I think they should have kept it at least a little closer than what the score ended up being. I mean, I was not impressed with the 71-49 finish in the first half. I was impressed by just a three-point uh, deficit. So, yeah, I mean, if you look at this game and you want want to circle it as a bigger one sure I just was looking at it from a more realistic perspective and thinking well Abilene Christian should be the one where they win and then that could propel them going into the Don Haskins Sun Bowl Invitational if they win those right there it bodes well for them going into conference play the one thing you don't want is you don't want UTEP to go on the road and lose to Abilene Christian next week and as, no as it looks right now Mike the way that they're playing it doesn't look really good I mean that game could go down to the wire and Abilene Christian not in a uh, not a fantastic team either let me just put it that way well I hate to say it but it kind of looks like Golding might have lost this team already well yeah we'll, we'll see what happens hey I appreciate the phone call Mike thanks for weighing in uh, and thank you guys for coming to work and doing this Hey, I appreciate it, man. 915-505-6009 as we continue. Hey, you guys got a chance to listen to a lot of what we got a chance to talk about here. Uh, you know, Hunter brought up some interesting points. Uh, Ronnie was questioning things on this squad as well. We got some great calls like JJ and even Mike there uh, just questioning different things. Guys, we'll ping around the room. Your reactions to some of the phone calls we've got. Sal, uh, any thoughts here uh, from some of the hot yeah. takes that we've gotten so far? Yeah, uh, you know, pretty much um, a lot of them sharing the the same sentiments. You know, we we could talk about, I guess, X's and O's all day long, talk about offensive inefficiencies. But a a very common thing that we notice with uh, with a lot of the callers is, you know, the lack of um, of good body language, you know, or even mentions of of coaching being a problem or whatever the case is. Just things. I don't want to say they're not necessarily basketball related, but they're not X's and O's related. And and to see that early on. you know, into the season, haven't even, you know, escaped into 2024 yet or conference play. Um, there's a lot to work on, which I guess if you want to look at a positive, there's that, you know, game by game, you're learning what you can improve on more. But ultimately, just there's no answer so far. And I heard earlier how there's, uh, you know, no adjustments. I I wouldn't necessarily say that. I just think them not being able to successfully adjust is also playing a role. But we're we're learning more and more, you know, as the season goes on, Adrian. But the bad part is we're learning things that aren't good. Alberto, you give me your reactions to some of these calls right now. I think it's just a shared frustration from all the fan base uh, getting routed like this on TV. Uh, not even scoring 50 points, but having significant victories against teams that, like uh, callers have said, aren't D1 opponents. You know, having us feeling real good at the beginning of the se- uh, at the beginning of the season. Yeah, it's it's frustrating when when you come out and you look uh, flat offensively, flat defensively, and just ugly ba- basketball all around. It's your fans are going to get frustrated and they're going to demand some change. Yeah, I think the one thing that I like the most from all the callers right there during that stretch, I, I like the point from Hunter. It does not seem like the team from the first three games, that team was more motivated. That team was it played inspired basketball. And Zay, I, I just don't know what's going on during this these past four games if you could I don't know if I to- totally agree on pinning it on one guy like Zid Powell but I do agree that guys like him who've had bad body language who just seem like they um play well during stretches and then they falter at other points of the game that's what's really holding this team back right now what do you think 
Hey, uh, he, he's on the line right now, um, so so he'll be on in a bit. So I'll fill in for for a small amount. Um, you know, it's definitely um, you know there. It's evident when, when it comes to somebody like Sid Powell when he has a poor offensive game. You kind of see you know a similar sentiment uh, throughout the rest of the team uh, where guys you know just aren't having the ball fall through the hoop. But I think it's the fact that he's supposed to be a leader on the team along with uh, with Solomon, and they've looked bad in a in a number of games this year and you can't have that especially when you know they should be you know at times a a focal point on the offense along with Tay Hardy I guess if you want to say a big three so to speak name wise I think Powell Hardy and Solomon should be those guys but you haven't seen them be in unison uh, for a good part of the season Hey, let's go back to the phone lines right now. Milkman is next up on the phone lines 915-505-6009 Milkman, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, hey, not much, Milkman. What would you think of this game? Uh, I I was really, really disappointed. I, I, I got nothing. Like, I feel like, um, well, I think another caller said that it's like we're going backwards. I complete, like, the way they looked at the beginning of the year, a complete 180 from the way they are right now. I, it's not supposed to go this way. You're supposed to get better as the season goes on. I don't, I am clueless. I have no idea. I, I got to tell you though, uh, Oregon, <laughs> they are not good. Like I, I watching, watching they them that tonight, impressive. there is no, absolutely no way they should have gotten blown out by that. No way. The first six, seven minutes of that game, probably one of the, one of the worst six or seven minutes I've seen. And that, that goes from both teams. But absolutely horrendous basketball. Like both of them were awful. Uh, the the difference is Oregon just happened to get a little better. Um, not much, but a little bit, and it was enough to, uh, you know, um, blow out the miners who didn't do anything. Uh, I, <laughs> I I don't know. Like I love Coach Golding. I'm like, I I think he's you know doing things the right way. I'm I'm I don't know. What are your thoughts? I, I'm completely. Like I have, I have no words. I have no idea yeah, I, why. I kind of feel. I kind of agree with you. I kind of feel the same way, Milkman. I'm just kind of at a loss for words right now as to where this team's at and where they were when we started the season. I mean, I reflect back on the UC Santa Barbara game. That felt like the Super Bowl for this basketball team. And they went they right. threw the kitchen sink and they were flying in transition. They were playing great on both sides. Yet they fell in that game and they were getting excellent performances from guys like Hardy, guys like. Powell, guys like Solomon, all of them were stepping up in positive ways. And it just feels like during these last four games where they've lost, and I don't count the Western New Mexico, I don't. I don't count that game. Um, the, during these four losses, they just haven't had the same chemistry. They're not playing as well in transition. They're not as confident in their shots, their shot making, their uh, decision making oh, no. in transition. Yeah. And then I, I said this earlier, but they lose momentum when they falter on defense or on offense, and that leads to bad play on defense uh, that allows their opponents to score and, you know, uh, uh, take over in these games. Yeah, I, I uh, what you just mentioned about the, the shots, oh my, like, I felt like I was watching a completely different team. For, I, th- there were points earlier in the year where if they were shooting from, you know, inside the paint, I mean, they were unstoppable. And tonight, it was like air balls inside. I mean, it was it was unbelievable. I was like, who is this team? Like, I don't even – I did not even recognize them. It was awful. Absolutely awful. Right. I agree with you, Milkman. Hey, I appreciate the phone call, man. Thanks for weighing in on the show. Hey, let's keep things moving. Let's go to Selma next, 915-505-6009. Selma, good evening. What's going on? Hey, okay, I might sound a little positive and, like, hopeful, but I think if you guys were earlier, earlier you guys were talking about, like, how negative the calls have been. I think that, um, as you said, that, people still have trauma for football, and so I think they were hopeful that basketball was going to do better, and that's why they're going a little harder on the comments, but, I mean... There are teams that 
maybe at the beginning they have a little bit of a hiccup, but who knows? It can, it could be better throughout the year. I think a lot of it is um, also morale. I think because we were already feeling beat down by what happened with the football season, I think players also feel the how you know you took fans feel and like that I really truly believe that that translates to their overall performance is that we already have the expectation that they're not going to do well because of how we felt during football that maybe the energy is just not there and I think we should really remain hopeful also Sal hit me up daddy hey <laughs> get her number Zay I, I need to call her in a bit I'll probably head out early guys <laughs> but that's my take I think that if we just remain a little hopeful I do really believe in morale and I think that we just have this bad expectation of players I mean why even try it we already think that they're going to fail you know and like they do listen to fans and they, I'm pretty sure some of them do listen to the station listen to the radio and you know, it's it's a really good point. It's a really good point, Selma. The interesting part about it is, they, you know what? The players definitely do feel it from the fans. They do feel it. And uh, not having success, losing these games, they felt how excited they were. The, these players themselves were the ones who stormed into the crowd, and they were the ones who celebrated with the fans after the UC Santa Barbara game. So to your point, you're exactly right. The momentum, it's all there. Uh, the fan, they feed off the fan base in a big way. This is that same team that went into the student section after that win and celebrated with them, and they have to hold them uh, themselves accountable to say, hey, this team can actually turn things around, which is definitely possible. It's still really early. Somebody said earlier, Are, you know, I'm kind of starting to get out on Joe Golding. I'm not out on Joe Golding just yet whatsoever. I think the Abilene Christian game, I'm still putting a lot of stock in that one because that one will tell you is this season going to go a little south or is this season going to go back up and uh, you know kind of like Salma says I rem- I still remain hopeful myself I remain hopeful that they're going to turn things around they're going to win that game against Abilene Christian they're going to close out the non-conference strong and they're going to put themselves in a better position to start off conference play if they don't get to that point then I'm starting to raise some red flags. I start to get a little worried about this team and where it could finish up when it's all said and done. Let's keep things moving. Ed is next up on the phone lines, 915-505-6009. Uh, good stretch of phone calls, by the way. Thank you, everybody, for calling in here on the show. Ed, good evening, man. What's going on? How are you? Ed, good evening, man. I'm doing well. What's going on with you? Uh, oh, just... Uh... Hey, I wanted to uh, I wanted to change it up a little bit and just throw a little bit of an angle um, because I think in today's world technology is just moving so quick and the UTEP team that we saw earlier in the season was fundamentally different. I mean, we we're really moving the ball, and it doesn't take long for these coaches nowadays to really look at a team's strength. And say, you know what, they're running a lot, they're doing this, let's, let's, right now I think with UTEP, a lot of teams can come in and a lot of coaches can say, look, Tay Hardy is their offense, let's, uh, let's really put pressure on him, let's slow him down in the second half, let's wear him down, but I also think that they've taken away our game. So I was calling up to say, okay, what do we, what can we do? Just, you know, we're, we're not coaches, but should we change uh, maybe through a three guard lineup or should we change um, our rotation a little bit? Because it does look like these coaches now with technology have already exploited our team and said, okay, this is what they're doing. Good. Let's take it away from them. So that's what I was kind of, I wanted to throw yeah. a little bit of an angle. You know, on that. I think it's a really good point, Ed, and I appreciate the phone call because I do think the book is out on UTEP, and I think I said this last time. I think the book is out on UTEP. I think that you could stop them by throwing zone defenses against them. I think you force them to shoot, and when UTEP is forced to shoot, especially from outside in the perimeter, that's when they struggle the most. UTEP is at its best when they are playing defense and playing motivated defense. They're at their best when they're playing in transition and scoring. 
in transition. And they are they're most uncomfortable when they are playing from uh, you know a deficit like they were playing today in the second half. Oregon just starting to distance themselves and UTEP trying to shoot their way back in a game. That's not going to happen. Oregon starts to go up 10 points. They're going to just distance themselves. This year's team is different than last year's team in that last year's team could actually st- keep uh, a 10 point deficit uh, a 10 point deficit and I'll also try to cut into that but this year's team uh, lacks that kind of firepower offensively, at least during this stretch, where I'm not sure if they can come back in these types of games. But, Ed, I, I think what Ed's saying is stuff that we've been saying over these past couple weeks. Yeah, that when they when you start to watch UTEP, um, they just don't really – they they just uh, – it's been – it's kind of like the book is out on them, Sal. It kind of feels like a lot of teams know how to scheme against them, game plan against them, and UTEP's not really able to rebound from that. Yeah, and and you know what? Uh, it, in a way, it kind of reminds me of like with the. It's not the exact same thing, of course, but with the football team, right? The game has to go a certain way. You have to stick to a certain game plan to have a chance. And when it becomes this this offensive shootout, so to speak, just like with the football team, when they have to start passing more, let's equate passing uh, in football over to uh, shooting threes for the basketball team. If you have to result to that to kind of get back in the game. At that point, you're kind of out of it already. So if they're not doing well in transition, the offense, essentially, let's just be real about it. It's non-existent if they have no if they have no, you know, motion, no fluidity, no momentum when it comes to that transition game, which wasn't there today. You see how stagnant this offense can be. Yeah, it's a really good point. Um, hey, our telephone number, 915-505-6009 to get into the program. Let's go back to Twitter. King Eric with this one. 18 turnovers is never going to win games. I don't care who you are, as I've said all year and will continue to say otherwise. We need to get shooters. What is the point of stopping people if we cannot score? Adrian at Enemy Win 3 sends us this. By any chance, can Scotty Walden coach basketball? <laughs> there you go. Uh, Eric Fournier, he sends us this one. This was coaching uh, Coach Joe Golding's make-or-break year, and unfortunately, he's not the answer. His substitutions are trash. His associate coaches are not very good. Also, Zid Powell's lack of effort and bad attitude are very apparent, and I would get rid of him immediately. Joe Chacon, part one. You can't win games missing low-percentage shots and free throws. I'd love to have that stat that shows miss layups or 10 footers uh i'll give it to you right now the utep in this game for layups uh this is loading right here they were seven for 15 oh man that's awful good uh good eye joe chacon seven for 15 is what they were uh joe chacon continues the sky isn't falling joe golding isn't blaming injuries or he is not blaming a tough schedule he is seeing the same game we are i have faith that he can make this transition and come conference play, we will win the games that we need to win to get back into the dance. Hashtag minor talk. Hashtag it's 19 degrees here. I like it. Good stuff. Um, this is from Adrian at Enemy Win 3. Adrian, even the announcer was wondering why we kept fronting the big men in the paint. Why did Golding make that adjustment? Yeah, it felt like they were getting cooked down low. It just felt like uh, the miners let a lot of uh, you know buckets go down low, and that really hurt them in this game. So defensively, they started to crumble in the second half, and Oregon started exposing different things from the miners. Uh, this is coming from Mike Cubiello. The good news is is Abilene Christian has been worse than the Miners by far. That's a really good point. I mean, you look at the upcoming schedule. Actually, Miners should probably be more afraid of Norfolk State than they should Abilene Christian, maybe even that Wyoming game if they end up playing them in the finals of the Sun Bowl Invitational. But Zay, I'm not impressed with Abilene Christian. I'm just saying UTEP needs a road win. And if they don't get one next week, that's where I start to sound the alarms and start to get really worried. That's the game that you expect UTEP to win regardless of the record that the miners have next week 
Yeah, you know, ACU, yeah, like like Michael said, you know, this is they're they're they have that one win against Oklahoma State, but they've had some pretty bad losses, right? But the only thing that worries me in that game is the amount of emotions that are going to be going on, right? Joe Golden yes. going back yes. home, going back to his alma mater, right? And all that all that can, you know, that's 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 a recipe for an upset if that's what we're going to call it, right? Because ACU has struggled at times. So, you know, UTEP needs a road win. They've lost by 20 in both of their uh, road games, true road games this season. So, you know, what what's going on, right? Um, we'll see what happens. Sal, uh, if UTEP loses that game against Abilene Christian, yeah. are you sounding the red flags and starting to sound the panic button right there? You know what? I, I'll tell you this. There, there's two ways. There's a yes and a no. I'll say yes if they lose the way that they did tonight which is basically just, you know, poor body language at times and just getting run out the gym. I won't hit the alarm because I'll I'll know that's who this team is if they go out there and lose. Well, obviously, if they win, I won't hit the alarm. But if they go out there and lose and it's close, back and forth, but we just see those offensive inefficiencies kind of overcome them, but they lose, you know, somewhere in the realm of like five, six points. And I don't mean like garbage points, get them back within five or six, but somewhere there, I'll have an idea of who this team is. But if they go out there and just get run out the gym, poor body language, bad fouls, not making free throws, and also uh, taking terrible shots, if they go out there and do it, then I'll sound the alarm because I'll think the team is lost at that point. Yes. Okay. I like it. I think that's right, Sal. You have to kind of see, and I think what you were trying to also say is it's it's got to be the linear improvements. It can't just be yeah. the same thing or like a regression, kind of like what we've heard from some of the callers here on the show today. So I think that's a really good point. Hey, guys, let's do this. What we're going to do is we're going to start uh, handing out our awards. We're going to turn the page, look over to Abilene Christian, and then we're going to put a bow on this one and wrap it up here on the show. Uh, this one, let's go uh, the player of the game. Let's give it to Otis Frazier the third. He was playing hard in this one. Timothy Cantrell, player of the game. Otis Frazier, the third, 12 points, 5 of 8 scoring, 6 rebounds in this one. And he played in 29 minutes of action. Also had a block and a steal uh, for the Miners to help in this game. Uh, Otis Frazier, the third, helping the Miners out. And he's he's actually played well during yeah. this stretch despite struggling uh, on, on uh, you know, the win side of things. But let's give Tim, uh, our Timothy Cantrell Realty, player of the game, out to Otis Frazier and for the latest tips and listings for the uh, El Paso area, whether you're looking to buy or sell a home, uh, check out Timothy Cantrell. Actually, check him out on Instagram, Timothy Realtor on Instagram, and he always brings us the Player of the Game Award. Also, for our Hot Hand of the Award, uh, of the Game Award, it will go to Tay Hardy. He had a trio of three-pointers in this one, 16 points to lead the minors. He had four turnovers, though and he had a steal in 37 minutes of action. Uh, the Miners needed some three-pointers in this one, and he had three of the four uh, trios for the Miners in this game, and that is Tay Hardy winning the hot hand of the game, brought to you by Wind Supply El Paso. Hey, El Paso, it's starting to get cold in the city, and I just want to say that if you're looking for a champion furnace, if you're looking for the best uh, supplies for keeping your house warm, check out the Find a Dealer tab online at windsupplyelpaso.com. That is the Find a Dealer tab at windsupplyelpaso.com to find your nearest furnace. Sal, even though we had to give out the uh, Player of the Night awards, it was tough for us to come up yeah. with these, right? Because no one wants to see a loss like this one here, and, and it's not fun to give out awards. we got to do it here on the show. Uh, but it's just a game. It, this is a game where you just kind of you watch the tape, you see what you uh, you had in this one or you didn't have from a player perspective, and you, and you kind of try to turn the page as quickly as possible to Abilene Christian if you're the Miners. Yeah, exactly. And, and- and kind of to that point as well, I think obviously the guys try to get up for each game, but the sentiment around it from majority of the fan base, and I can't remember the name of the caller earlier, but he asked, "Isn't shouldn't Oregon be a bigger game? And in theory, I guess you could say that, but majority yeah. of the fan base knows that the, the true, um, I guess a better measuring test when it comes to how you can, um, you know, identify this team or, or, you know, take something away from them was going to come against the Abilene Christian. So if if anything, 
the, the tough part is you try to take the positives from this game, and it's not a lot that you can really take going into the next game. But when it comes to those those player rewards, somebody's got to get them. And I, I think yeah. I think the two best players tonight, uh, you know, the, the right names were mentioned. Because without those guys coming to play, the score could be a lot worse. Guys, where do we even begin to turn the page? Because what if this is that trap game, Zay? What if the Miners uh, don't come out and win next Sunday? This is finals week for the players. The student, Remember, they're student athletes, and they have to go through finals just like every other student does on campus at UTEP. So it will be a busy week like Joe Golding was talking about. And uh, it's an imperative week of practice for the Miners as they get ready for Abilene Christian. This is a must-win, Zay. You can't lose in this uh, – potential trap game you called it possible upset you can't lose in this game come Sunday you really can't you really can't and it it kind of feels like listening to all these calls that this fan base is teetering right they're on that they're coming to that point where it's like they're going to start sounding the the sirens the red flags everything's going to go up right this fan base is going to kind of not I wouldn't say turn against this squad but you know they're going to be very very critical if they lose this game which they shouldn't lose this game right we for the first you know five games we're looking at this squad we're saying hey they can be a top three team in conference USA but now right are are we sure they've been top six are they are they you know Mm. where are Mm. they what 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 has to change you know and uh, I guess we'll see They they have they have time to think about it yeah, I think that the answer to that is where UTEP was uh, after game four in Conference USA. I would have said definitely top five, you know, no doubt about it. Now, are they at that point? I'm not sure. It's a good question. It's a good, uh, it's, it's kind of a good rhetorical question going into this final stretch of non-conference play. UTEP has to try to play like they are a top five team in Conference USA, not like they are on, on the other side. So it's a really, really good uh, point that you make there, Zay. Hey, before we uh Close up. Hey, guys, I have to mention, my oh, UTEP women's basketball fell in a nail-biter tonight to the Pilots, uh, 68-63. Alberto, I know you were at the uh, matchup tonight. Give me your takeaways. It was an overtime loss, and uh, this women's basketball team is just trying to find some wins under their belt here in non-conference play. Yeah, the Miners just not able to close it out. Uh, sloppy basketball at the beginning, too, just not what you want to see from the Miners. They were, they were in it almost the entire game, but it starts to slip away from them in the second half of the game. So, yeah, I look for them to improve in their next outing. They're, they're, they're not on the best streak right now. Yeah, and, and that's just the reality of taking over a team from Ke- in Keith Adams' perspective and just, well, you know, she's got to just try to get some wins under their belt. They were practicing pretty t- uh, hard this week. I know they wanted this one this week. It just didn't fall their way. So, uh, Zay, any thoughts on women's basketball before we wind things up? Guys, I got to get your thoughts real quick. Give me your uh, women's basketball thoughts, Zay, and then give me your women's volleyball thoughts as we get ready for the big one tomorrow. Yeah, you know, starting off with women's basketball, it's it's a tough month. It's a tough month. I mean, they go on the road to play a UTSA team who's, you know, they're solid, and then they lose by almost 30 points, which is, you know, that's not what you want to see ever. You give up 90 points, and this this team, they're, they're, it feels like they're trying to find themselves, right? They're kind of, you know, kind of still meshing together, gelling under Keith Adams. So, you know, it maybe wasn't, you know, the season you'd expect, and we'll, we'll see how, how they progress, but it's been very disappointing so far. You know, obviously, women's volleyball, Ball. I mean, they're, they're playing really good. The energy in Memorial Gym is just off the charts. And, you know, if you've been watching this team, you've seen the highs and you've seen the lows. So it's exciting to see them, you know, hosting um, such a big time semifinal matchup tomorrow. Sal, we've watched this volleyball team from afar. We've given uh, ben, yeah. ben Wallace a ton of credit uh, for what he's been able to do with the volleyball squad. And tomorrow they're putting it all on the line to try to advance to the finals of this big postseason tournament. What a big story this yeah. is for this squad. We could have buried this squad earlier this year, just like Zay said. For those who stuck around, I mean, they've been really reaping the benefits of watching a great volleyball team. Yeah, and all the adversity that they've uh, that they face, you know, some stretches didn't look like um, you know they had it together. They also had a, a number of injuries that have hampered them, you know, at times. But adversity is something that they've really pushed through and and seen leaders on this team. You know, uh, Darley coming in, seeing Torrance Lovesy as well perform at times. Um, Gant and Hills, the Maddies, if you want to put it that way, they they've been incredible uh, this year and. 
the fans uh, have been receptive to that. You know, you kind of wish that they would have shown up earlier, you know, in the year to kind of, you know, get that home crowd, uh, that, that home court advantage, you know, night in and night out that they deserve. But it's nice to see them finally get a packed house out at the Mem. So um, big, big game tomorrow, Adrian. And if I'm not mistaken, this tournament, uh, you know, has uh, home sites for, for actual campuses, so to speak. So wh- let's say they do. How about this? I don't want to jump that far ahead. Whoever wins this game will have a chance to host that championship game as well same as on the other side of the bracket so that's what makes this tournament so much fun yeah that, that, I'm totally with you on that I mean it's just the fact that they have that opportunity ahead of them that's what the, you play for I mean that's what you try to win this whole thing for is so you get a chance to do this in front of your home crowd at UTEP uh, so I know what you were alluding to there Sal let's see if they can get it done tomorrow they've got a big one comes up 1 Huge, o'clock yeah. for UTEP volleyball and uh, I think that's how we're going to wind things up here on the show it was a busy weekend talking UTEP athletics we'll talk more about this basketball team coming Coming up next Sunday, it's a big one. UTEP Abilene Christian coming up on the 17th of December. But for tonight, the Miners fall in a big one to Oregon. We will have Miner Talk coming up next Sunday out at the District West, part of our watch party, 32-33 North Mesa on the west side. But that'll do it for us here on the broadcast. For Zay Galindo, for Sal Montes, for Alberto Reta, and uh, for yours truly, Adrian Bratis, uh, we were we we're signing off here on the show and saying so long. Thank you for listening to Minor Talk presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency. We'll be back next week right here on 600 ESPN El Paso.